Hello, hello. Welcome back. Uh, so, last time, we finished modeling this little wall-mounted vending machine. Okay. And now, uh, we're pretty much done with the major modeling points. Obviously, you can add more big objects if you wanted to. Like, this could be a really cool backdrop for a sci-fi car, bike, or even a robot. Um, but as far as environment is concerned, like, this was the last big thing that I had planned. Turn that back on so we can see what's going on. Uh, but our scene is certainly not looking finished, but it's looking kind of bare. No details to it. Uh, and so that's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about making what I'm referring to as Greebles, which is a modeling term. It originated um, in the making of the original Star Wars. Uh, and it's the idea, if I go back to my other uh, my other scene, it's just adding kind of surface detail that gives it some more visual interest. It's not really doing anything practical. These are all really simple models. Um, there's nothing, nothing crazy going on here. But when you start filling out an area with them, it, it gives it some personality and some life and something to look at. So that's what I want to cover today, or in, in this video. Uh, in the next video, I will spend some time talking about how I did these cables. Okay, so we got a braided cable. We've got a few different types, um, using a couple of different techniques, all using curves. Uh, what's really nice about this one in particular is it's got a start and an end cap, so that I can change the length of the cable, and you can see that cap stays in place. And it makes it a really easy... Uh, easy and flexible flexible way to uh, to add this detail. So we'll get to that. First, I want to just talk about the Greebles. I'm going to try to split this up into a few different videos um, just for your ease of consumption. Uh, and then I'll probably do a third video just about pipes and, and pipe joints. I know I talked about using the uh, spin modifier to get these right angles, uh, but I'm also going to talk about how to do some pipe intersections uh, pretty briefly. But before I get to all these electrical panels up here, I want to do a couple of things in the scene. Uh, the first, and I did this off camera, but I realized in the last video I forgot to mention or I forgot to sharpen up all these edges. I didn't apply the sub surf modifier and I didn't sharpen up all the edges. So I did that off screen so it's looking better uh, than it was. Uh, but there's a couple other things that I want to do. If we look back at our reference here, um, I tapered the corners of this window, and then this sign here, I just made it askew. It's actually, if we focus on it here, it's actually coming off the wall slightly right back there, and it's tilting at an angle. Again, just kind of give some more personality and visual interest to this. Um, so I'm going to do, I'll taper these corners. I'm going to wait to pull this off the wall because I want to add some screws to it, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, for this one, this one's really easy. We're just going to grab the corners, control B, and bevel that. And then we can grab those edge loops again. And uh, control shift R, hit E to keep it even. And add in those control loops. I will also turn on my screencast keys. Uh, we can also go in edit mode and add the modifier to this. Shade it smooth. And add the rest of our control loops. Real quick and dirty. Nothing, uh, nothing fancy going on here. it for the frame. Now we just have to take our wall, let me hide the truss, and move these vertices over so that we can't see the opening. Move this 
up a little bit too. So just a little bit of housekeeping at the beginning there. And now we have our finished window there. Uh, and you can do the same thing here as well. Uh, for the sake of time, I will leave that, but I trust you know what to do there. Uh, I'll also mention in my other scene, which is not. I had three versions of it open. Um, my other scene, I also added some very simple pipes here. Just a cylinder, extruded, uh, and then I added some edge loops and extruded those out to give it some some variation there. That's it. I'm not going to cover that here either because I know you can do that. Uh, but we will talk about these now. And I'll also save this as a new version before I forget. So this will be 06. Call this Griebles. Okay. Cyberpunk Street 06 Griebles uh, recording because I'm obviously recording this. So as I said, Griebles are just a, kind of a generic term for surface level detail. And we use this as our reference. Um, a couple things to note here. One, a lot of this is separate parts, but they are parented to the base just for ease of moving it around. The other thing is that uh, there's a lot of linked duplicates here. So for instance, this bolt detail, which I'm going to do a better one uh, here in a minute, but this bolt detail, if I extrude that out, oops, my direction, you can see that all the bolts are connected to it uh, with a link duplicate, which makes it really easy and manageable uh, to cover. Uh, the exception to the simplicity in modeling is this piece right here. And this, I did extrude this all out as one piece. It's not necessary. As long as the shading doesn't look funny, you can have these things kind of intersecting. Uh, but even like, make this cube and then cut out a space for this to go in it. And you'd have a little bit more of a gap there, which might look interesting. I decided to make it all one piece simply so that I could try it. I wanted a little bit of a modeling challenge with edge flow and trying to keep it clean and simple, but also look good. Um, but yeah, it, having separate pieces is just fine. Okay. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's start with uh, we'll start with this one. Okay, so this is just basically six, or, or not six, uh, four rectangles. So I will select that. I'm going to, ooh, before I do that, I'm going to select all of these, hit M, and move it to a new collection. We will call this electrical panels. My typing is slow and I'm also thinking about other things. Um, I'm also going to set this back to my studio lighting. There we go. Okay, so now I've got that collection and we'll start just with this one. Also turn off the vending machine for now. And let's get into it. So wireframe, vertex mode. I'm going to move this out a little bit. Make it a little bit wider. And we've got those uh, basically three sections. So let's add in four edge loops. So we've just defined those three sections. And then I want a little bit of separation between these sections. So I'm going to select those two edge loops and control B to bevel them. Just give myself a little bit of a gap there between them. And then we have that top, this top little bit here. So we'll need another edge loop up here, and then two edge loops here. Scale those apart. Okay, those are the main blocks. And then two more edge loops right here. That's that little bit in the center. Uh, we can also add one more edge loop right there. Go into vertex mode, select that, and delete them. 
and add our mirror modifier. X axis is good. Uh, now you can see that it's off center. That's because the origin point is not in the center of the mesh. So I'm just going to select this edge and uh, Shift S, snap cursor to selected. Go back to object mode and origin to 3D cursor. Okay, again, that's uh, in my quick menu, but you can go to object to set origin to 3D cursor. So now that that's back together, we'll turn on clipping in the mirror modifier and we can collapse that because we don't need that anymore. Uh, so let's get back to it now. What we need to do is start extruding. So I'm going to go into edge mode, or not edge mode, face mode, sorry. I'm still not awake. Oh, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, we'll select all of these. E to extrude them. I'm going to go just a little bit at first, because that's just going to be for this guy. Then I'll deselect that face, extrude it some more. Then I'm going to deselect those, and extrude that a little bit more. So now I've got some variation, got a little bit more kind of interest in personality. And that's it for, the, for what's connected uh, to that piece. Everything else is sitting on top of it. So what we need to do is add in our subsurface modifier, shade smooth. I'm going to disable that in edit mode, this button right here. And we can start adding in our control loops. So same sort of thing we've done a bunch of times already. Let's start in this corner. So go down to the bottom now. That one. Okay. This one in here. Basically anywhere there's a corner or an edge, I'm going to do the triple fencing thing. So we've got the actual corner edge that defines it, and then we've got an edge loop on each side. Looks like that's all I need for the vertical ones. Horizontal ones. It's not that one. You can also do the thing where you add two and scale them apart vertically because it is vertically straight. Um, scale works, but your call. And I also want to add, we'll add one in center here and there. Okay. Shading's not awesome. I'm going to go down to my uh, object data properties and turn on auto smooth. That helps. See, we're still getting some, some of this shading fall off. Um, and that's something where just adding more edge loops will help with that. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. I want to just reduce some of this geometry a little bit. So I think we'll go, let's see, we'll start, start here. Let's grab those. Actually, we can do it this way. We're going to just cut from the corner out. Same thing here. This one, I don't have a whole lot of space between them, so I might just go to there. In, uh, when you're using the knife tool, uh, you can hit E to start a new cut. See, this is still not going to... 
quite give me what I want. That's going to be more than five sides. I don't think I gave myself quite enough space in there. Do that. Um, well, we've got a couple of options. One, we could leave it. A lot of extra geometry there that we don't need. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to go into wireframe. And I'm going to select there, and I'm just going to move it down. Give myself a little bit more space here. It's going to be the simplest solution. It'll get me what I want. What I can do is I can add in a new edge loop right in the center there. Uh, yeah, actually, we'll add in one more there. I'm going to dissolve that edge, join those back together, add in one across here. So I did that so that I can just terminate this diagonal before the edge. Now that I have that, I can select these two edges and I can't, I don't want to delete this one yet, this vertical one, because it's going to in effect further down the line, but I can get rid of these horizontal edges. Let X and dissolve those edges. So we've got a quad here, and then eventually we will get rid of these two edges. But I've got to clean up down here first. So keep doing this, and this is the same thing that we did on the uh, on the screen keyboard in the last video. Not really anything new here, but a little review doesn't hurt, I suppose. Well, let's see. I think we'll just go one on this one. Can get rid of this edge right here, this edge right here. Then we will get rid of that's not carrying through, so we can hit X and get rid of that edge as well. Okay, so we've got all quads again. That's good. Go right on down the line. And I'll do this a little a little bit faster here. And E to start a new cut, turn to confirm. Then we can grab this edge, this edge, this edge, and we can get rid of that one. Right at the bottom. Oh, looks like I missed an edge loop. Need one there. And uh, again, for the sake of the diagonal, I'm going to add in one more. This one I will extend out a little bit further. those and then we can get rid of these and before I do I'm just going to go back up here and check how that's looping around that looks good x and dissolve those edges okay looks good and now we've got a face loop that goes around everything and we also have individual uh, face loops that go around each individual piece which is pretty great I'm really happy about how that turned out uh, and then we got this area up here, which same sort of thing. We'll add in here and here. Um, no, you know what? I'm not going to. I think we can just do this simple cut right here. That'll be enough. Then we can, in edge mode, get rid of those. Should do it. Oh, 
Oh, I missed some down here as well. Let me add those before I get rid of these edges. Get a lot of edge loops in here to uh, control the edge flow. Yes, you can do this with just bevel modifiers. Um, but once you start adding textures and things, those modifiers tend to need to be applied because it will distort the shape of the, of the texture and you'll get distortion in the edges. So doing it this way is not, uh, it's a destructive um, workflow in that like you can't go back and really easily and quickly change it like you can with a bunch of booleans and, and bevels, but um, it also gives you more kind of concrete results when you start dealing with applying image textures. Okay, so now I can get that. This one. I think we can get rid of this one. We can get rid of that one. How does that look? Yeah, it looks all right. All right, uh, I'm going to leave that there because I'll just get bogged down in this and we're already 20 minutes into this video. Okay, so once we have all of this, uh, now it's really just kind of decorating it pretty well. So I'm going to shift right click right there and we're going to add in a, add a cylinder. I'm going to set the vertices to eight. I'm going to set it to uh, actually, n-gon is fine for the cap fill type. We can bring that radius down. We can bring the height way down. And then we'll set it to align to view. Okay. So once we have it there, I'm going to go in edit mode and just scale it down a little bit more. Then I'm going to select just the face. Actually, I'll select both faces. I'd inset them. And then X to delete those faces. Let's move it out a little bit so we can see through it. And then we can select these two edges and bridge them together. And again, I'm going to intersect the mesh a little bit because that's fine. I will add a subdivision. Uh, modifier on it and then we can go in and add in our two edge loops scale them along the y oops scale along the y axis sharpen that up same thing on the inside add two edge loops s y oops that should work s y there it goes Don't want to go too far and then couple on the front. If we're getting really picky, we can move it out and put a couple on the back as well. Okay. Then shade smooth. And I mean that's how you make a, a donut. That's again nothing new and, and groundbreaking there. Um I will also add just for a little bit of variety. I'm gonna add another edge loop. I'm gonna bevel it. Control B. Add in uh, three, so to scroll up once on the middle mouse button. And then I'll scale this down. And then we'll need to add another control loop here. Just to keep that kind of sharp. Right, just so we have a little bit of extra detail. Uh, we can do the same thing with these vertical edges. Uh, and I'm just using the same, same tricks I've used for everything else. Uh, see that sharpens that probably more than I want. So maybe I won't do that. Um, yeah, that's fine. So once I have that in place, oh, I'm also going to control A and just apply rotation on it because I, I did the align to view when I made it, that uh, rotation was off. So once I have that in place, then we can just kind of duplicate that around wherever we see fit. So in this case, 
Uh, I'm going to Alt D so it's a linked duplicate. I'll move one down there. Alt D and a Z to keep it in line. And then grab this one. Alt D, Z to keep it in line there. Now these two are recessed a little bit more, so I'll push those back. But we can also add variation. It doesn't have to be quite so mechanical and lined up. So maybe this one is further back anyway. Maybe it's just sticking out a little bit. Um, but at the same time, because these are all linked duplicates, if I decide that I want, in general, everything to be a little bit rounder, I can uh, grab these edge loops and scale them down a little bit. Now it's going to be a rounder piece, and they're all they will all reflect that change. Okay, same sort of thing over here is I can grab a grab a cube, grab an edit mode, scale it way down. That we are right plane. Add an edge loop there. Grab this phase and scale it down. So we've got a nice simple taper going on. Maybe I'll push that back a little bit. Okay, and now we just need to uh, basically bevel everything. So I'm going to go in edge mode, hit A to select everything, and control B to bevel it. Uh, and I will just leave it like that. I know this creates little triangles at the corners. Mm, okay, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to do number pad zero to zoom in here. It'll be two, three. It'll be a little bit sharper. Also gives me all quads. Shade smooth. And there's that. Uh, let's see what else I did. Oh, I just did. <laughs> did something similar up here. I'll add in a cube. Tab, scale it down. In edge loop, grab these faces, hit E to extrude, right click to keep it in place, and then Alt S scale along the normals just to make sure that everything stays even. You can even check offset even. Uh, and then add our edge loops to keep it sharp. And then control two and shade smooth. Okay. So maybe slide that down a little bit, sharpen that up. But once we have those in place, um, the last thing I, I well, two things that I want to do here. One, I want to make sure that I'm keeping an organized structure here. So this is electrical panel two. I'm going to grab everything, uh, grab the base last, and hit Control p parent, uh, keep transform. So now I can move this panel around and everything will follow it. I also want to go back and name these, which I should have done before I did all the duplicates, but here we are. So I'll just pause this real quick and name them. Okay, everything's named. Uh, I used the Greeble prefix, so I know it's just kind of general scatter, detail, nothing important. Um, and then the last thing is you can see that these are not showing up in my collection the way they're supposed to be, so I'm going to select them all, hit M, and move it to my Electrical Panels collection. Uh, and now if we expand out Electrical Panel 2, you can see that everything is underneath there as it should be. Okay. So it's the same sort of thing through the rest of this. Uh, I'm not going to go through and model them. Um, I don't think it's really all that necessary. Uh, I will give you a quick look at the wireframes here, um, but I will show you how it... I won't show you how I did these bolts. Uh, instead, what I will do is show you a better way to do these bolts. So let's do that now. Uh, to do the bolts, all you need to do is enable a modify or a uh, an add-on. So go to Edit. Preferences, add-ons, and search for 
bolt factory. So just type in bolt and it'll pop up right there. Turn that checkbox on. And now, shift right click, put my 3D cursor right there. You go to your shift A uh, add menu, mesh, and bolt. Now we'll zoom out here because by default it makes it enormous. Uh, but now you have options for bolt or nut. Uh, options for the bit type. If we look at the top here, we can change that to an Allen or a Torx or a Phillips um, or none. X head, 12 point. Now you can do a cap, dome. Get all the options. It's a rather wonderful add on because you can model these by hand, but why would you? Uh, so there's a couple of different ways that you can use these. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll do this a couple of different ways. So first we'll start with the bolt and nut that I that I did before. So I've got the bolt. I'm going to keep it with the hex head, although we're, we're not going to see that. And I'm just going to keep it at the defaults, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with the defaults. Well... Actually, undo that, and I'm going to add a new one. And not in edit mode, make sure we're in object mode. See, that bolt is still there because I deleted it. I deleted it in edit mode and not object mode. I'm going to hit X and delete that one more time. Okay, so we're going to add in a bolt. Uh, I just want to see. I'm going to bring this division count down to like. What does 12 look like? 12 is fine. It's going to be really small. There's going to be a bunch of these. Um, can we go? Can we get away with 8? We can get away with 8. Mm. We can get away with 8, but I'm going to go with 20, uh, 12. Just because. Okay. Uh... That should be everything that we need in the presets there. And then with the cursor in the same position, I'm going to shift A and I'm going to add in another bolt. And this time this is going to be a nut. And I, I do this at the same time because then it adds it in the same place and they're connected nicely. And I'm just going to select that and move it up. Okay, so now I've made this piece. Now I can... Select this bolt, go into wireframe, edit mode, grab these vertices. I'm going to select everything below here, I guess above here. Mm, let me go up a little bit higher. I'll make sure we can't really see it. And I'll delete those vertices. Because we're not going to see them, we don't need them. Okay, once I have that, then I can select both. I'm going to select the nut last. And uh, control J to join them as one object. I'm going to select this top edge loop here. And uh, shift S, cursor to selected. Tab in object mode and set the origin to the 3D cursor so that the origin is at the top there. And then we can scale it way down and move it down. Front view here. Scale it down some more. I'm going to rotate it around the x axis, negative 90 degrees. Okay. And I'll hit GY to turn on snapping and I'll just snap it to the surface there. So that's a much easier way to do that. That's still way more geometry than I need. Um, I would encourage you to go a little bit simpler with that. Because it's just, it's just a lot, and we don't really need all that much. So I'll select every other edge before I do all the duplicating. Um, because once you start duplicating these, it's really easy to suddenly end up with 
30 or 40 in the scene. Uh, and if we can cut that geometry down a little bit, that'll help with render times and just overall scene performance. So we'll dissolve those edges. You can see there's barely a difference made. Now we got our bolt, or in this case, the nut. Uh, I'm going to leave it called nut because there is going to be a bolt where we see the bolt head. Um, let's check our scale. Yeah, that looks all right. So now it's just going to be Alt-D. And we'll move it over. I'll select them both. Alt-D and move it down. Okay, so now we have some form of mechanical connection there. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to do here, well, I guess there's two last things. There's always more than one last thing. Is I'm going to select uh, select them and just rotate them around the y-axis a little bit. Just so that they're not all perfectly lined up with the world. We can go in, in front view and, and rotate this. And it doesn't really matter exactly how much, just... Oh, okay, I don't want these to look too similar. Like that, maybe. Okay, Just so we have some variation. Uh, and those those threads, as I said, I, when I did the example, I was just not thinking about Bolt Factory, uh, and I just did something even simpler. But uh, when we've got these uh, these options, there's no reason not to use them. So then I can grab uh, each of these, grab the panel last, Control P, set object or set parent to object to keep transform, and now everything comes with it. So there's our electrical panel. Uh, you can go further as, uh, if you want. You can do kind of the same thing that I did on the vending machine where you add that little kind of recessed uh, edge panel right here. Uh, you can do that exact same thing that we did at the end of the last video up here if you want to have maybe this little cutout up here or something. Really easy to do. Um, and then just kind of duplicate and replicate them across. Use different shapes. Uh, we've got this little floating piece right here, which is a, just a stretched out cube with a taper and then an additional extrusion. Uh, just make sure that you're naming and you're staying organized. Um, here is my electrical panels group. Uh, you can see all of these curves are not uh, named. These are just the curves that are driving the cables. We'll talk about that in the next video. But all the panels themselves are organized and named. You'll see all the individual pieces. And it very quickly fills out the scene. Very quickly. So uh, at this point I think you have all the knowledge you need to do this. Uh, again, I'll show you these wireframes um, just so you can see what's going on, but really not a whole lot. Not a whole lot at all. Uh, again, on this piece, I made this bottom kind of piece uh, connected, but if you make it separate like I did up here, then you can use that, duplicate it, and scale it, and, and reuse that in multiple places. Okay. Pretty simple and straightforward. I did also add this little sign, um, which is just a cube with a base extruded in. And we have this vent, which these slats are just one with an array modifier. And we have this little frame. Slice this up. We have this frame, which is a separate object to the pipe. It's just extruded in, and then once I extruded that in, uh, and I added my control loops to keep the corner sharp, then I just selected the center uh, vertices because they were in a square, and I used the right-click loop tools circle uh, command to make them a circle. And then it's separate because this pipe has less subdivisions than this one. Um, I could just re-extrude this because I made the pipe first. Um, but I could just re-extrude this back and do the same thing, and it could be all one piece. Entirely up to you. Uh, and then I think that's really it. Uh, don't really need to worry about these wires, but I, can, I guess I can show you what the wires were. The wires were for the vending machine. Um, I It's not the vending machines. 
Neptune V2 in this file. I took the panel off and I just stuck some wires. I'm not done with with those wires, um, but I guess yeah, the, the wires will be in the next video. So uh, yeah, that's it. I'll stop dragging out this outro and we'll start the next video talking about the cables and how I did all of those.